eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I'm pretty sure we're live. It all, there's always this little, this little like delay between Zoom and Facebook, but I'm confident we're here now. All right, cool. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? My name is Adam Carswell, joined by my good friend, Austin Linney. And we're coming to you in creative mode today, a little pop-up session. We're calling it Fearless Friday, just because, hey, why not be fearless, press record, do some crazy things. Um, we are supposed to be, and we kind of are, we're supposed to be in the middle of a book planning meeting right now, but our third member of the team is busy uh, making deals happen, making money. So <laughs> we're cool with that, but we're like, hey, we got to do something now that he's not here. So this is it. Um, shout out to Anthony Vecino. Anthony, hope you're crushing it over there in Colorado. Can't wait to hear your stories and, and everything when you're back. But Austin, what's up, man? I mean, we're having a book planning meeting. What the heck am I, what the heck am I talking about? Actually kind of share in case we got anyone on here who, who doesn't know who you are. And I'll, I guess I'll give a little background on myself as well, but you go first. Who are you and, and what's happening? Well, well, this is what happens when the integrator's out. The, uh, the AED uh, people just <laughs> kind of do what they want to. <laughs> so to be honest with you, us doing a live is probably the most productive thing that we could get done. So I'm very proud of us on that, on that avenue. Uh, Austin Lenny, I run a podcast called Construct Your Life. I also have another podcast we released on Thursday called Brain Dump with Mr. Anthony Pisano, the one and only. I'm studying the psychology of success, um, how to construct your life to create impact and fulfillment. Um, I'm a real estate investor, Airbnb guy. Uh, but, but but what we're doing here, guys, is, is uh, me and Adam were on a clubhouse about a month ago, I guess. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't we documented talking. the story yet, actually, so this is a perfect time to do it. Yeah, we were on the clubhouse. We were on the club. What am I I'm speaking? Of <laughs> yeah, uh, we, were, we were on clubhouse and uh, we were like, hey, you know, like I've wanted to write a book about my story, but I'm not really ready to write a book about my drug addiction and everything yet. Cause I, cause I'm not like, not that I'm not there. It's just not the time to write that book. Uh, cause I want to have some business success tied into that, the end of that book to kind of round it into form. So everybody's been begging me to write a, a networking book for a long time and, uh, haven't really felt the need to that responsibility to take something on like that by yourself is, is, is quite a tall task, especially on ADD. And, uh, Adam was like, well, what about, what's, what, you know, what's about me? What, what do you define me as? And I was like, same thing, networking impact, so on and so on. So uh, we were floating out the idea of, of writing a book. And then Anthony is an amazing author and, and, and a ghostwriter of his own accord. And he loves the title and, and loves where we're headed. And so, so here we are, we're, we're a couple of weeks into planning the book, hopefully be launched uh, this summertime. And uh, the book is basically a um, how to, win friends and influence people 5.0 in a digital age. Um, so it's how to create impact, how to create relationships, how to create networking, masterminds, podcasts, all the kind of stuff that we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis that we're living that is so natural to us. But maybe somebody that's just getting started, maybe somebody that's changing careers doesn't understand how to take that value first approach. And that's, that's where we're headed. Yeah, that's a great summary of the, of the story. That was a great summary, dude. I mean, geez, I just <laughs> nailed that summary. <laughs> I want to I want to enhance it now. I want to take it to the next level. So you might have heard guys, you might have heard Austin share about overcoming his addiction. I mean, this guy has just, for lack of a better term, just been to hell and back. And he's got quite a story. And to see where he's at now, I mean, how many, are you two and a half years sober now? How, how, how long so, is it? Two, so two years, two years in, in about three months, um, fully sober from alcohol, um, down 65, 70 pounds, um, and, and rock and roll, dude, just haven't even got started yet. Just, just, yeah. just warming up, warming up the, putting on the socks. Networking like a champ. Uh, there's so many people in his network that he's Austin's like, oh yeah, I was talking to this guy whose net worth is a billion dollars. Oh yeah, and then I was talking to another guy whose net worth was a billion dollars the other day too. Um, <laughs> and uh, anyways, incredible story. He's doing something now. I, I don't know if you got back on it actually, Austin. You have to let us know, but it's called the uh, uh, 75 Hard, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm. You know, funny enough, we get back from Costa Rica. I'm in Costa Rica right now. We're gonna get back. Next Friday, I'm going to start back up on Monday because I can't. I'm, dude, I need that discipline in my life. So, yeah, 75 hard. I did it 150 days straight. So. And that is um, 
for context, what is 75 hard? What does that mean? So 10 pages a day, gallon of water, uh, uh, a diet, and then no alcohol, which is great because I don't drink, um, no cheat meals, and then two workouts a day, 45 minutes, and one of them needs to be outside, rain or shine or snow. So. Right. That's, and I'm sure you had some, like, maybe not, well, did you have to go work out during Z, a snowstorm? Yeah, in, in zero. Texas? I had to do it in zero, no power with an ice storm, multiple rain. But where were you, where were you showering? <laughs> I wasn't, uh, but when we got hotel, but ultimately it's interesting because you do those things and you realize how many excuses you tell yourself. Oh, it's not sunny today. It's raining. And I don't feel like it. When, when there's not an option, you go do it anyway. And when you get done, now you crave those days when you get to push through those barriers. Mm, powerful. So, yeah, that, I mean, and then again, Austin was talking about the book. Um, I guess I'll just say hi real quick for anyone on, on Austin's network that happens to see this, <laughs> this session that we're doing. My name is Adam Carswell. Um, I am in charge of all things marketing over at Liberty Real Estate Fund, and I manage our educational products at ASIM Capital. And then uh, outside of the world of commercial real estate, which has really given me the freedom to do things like this and create my own podcast, that's what I do. Um, I have a show, I produce webinars, Austin's been on one of them, and hopefully some more coming up here soon. And then most importantly, we're co-authoring a book right now which uh, really looking forward to. And that actually, like I wanted to, similar to Austin is like, I'm not there yet to write a book on a certain topic. And that's kind of how I felt before we started writing this book was like, uh, I would know I want to write a book one day, but like, what actually do people want? To, what would people actually be willing to learn from me? Right. Cause I could write something that I think would be a good fit, but it's like, I don't know. And then people in the random clubhouse, kind of like this, what we're doing right now, people in the clubhouse session that knew us were like, dude, Adam, Austin, like you guys, you're, you're, you're overthinking it. Like both of you clearly should just write a book on networking. Like that's at the core of both of who you guys are. Like <laughs> that, that's what you should do. And I was like, wow, thank you. I would have never thought of that for whatever reason. I just would have never thought to, to do that. So really looking forward to, um, you know, the work we're putting into this. And I love how someone very influential in your network is like, Hey, there needs to be a newer version of how to win, win friends and influence people. And then <laughs> you happen to be like, Oh, yeah, I'm writing that right now, actually. Well, well, think about it this way. I've done a lot of podcasts this week before I left town. And the, the common talk was, do you invest? Like, uh, I have amazing friends who are in multifamily. Like, and I said the same thing to Anthony. Like, Luca and Daisy and then Anthony Vasano. I would feel 100% comfortable giving them 100K and not looking at the deal at all. And the question is, is why would you do business with somebody like that? Now, now maybe that's not for everybody, but that's just how I believe in people. And that's how I'm always going to live my life better and different. So my question to you is, have you created a reputation among your peers and in your networks that somebody will do that type of business with you? And this is what this book is going to lay out, how you become that person of interest. Mm, yeah. I think we should just have you continue to write like all the summaries and stuff. <laughs> I'll just chime in where I can. <laughs> That's a good one though. I actually have to share though. I heard, I have a story um, I heard recently of, uh, you know, in regards to doing business solely on trust. Um, I know someone recently who very high integrity individual um, always like to do business on a handshake and someone within their network who they trusted tremendously not only kind of like did them wrong, but did many other people in their network wrong and no one saw it coming. And so um, I guess I just wanted to share that as a, maybe as a, just a reminder to keep that in mind. Um, and maybe, you know, I get this from Frank Kern too, and I know we're going to talk about this in the book, which is radical transparency. But uh, I, I think it's always good to, you know, let people know like, hey, like, just so you know, like, <laughs> we're going to be teaching you guys all this stuff, but um, like, Hey, <laughs> you might, you might die along the way, right? Like we can't just be like, Oh, this is the, this is going to work. This is going to work no matter what, take it. It's, it's the gospel. Like uh, take everything with a grain of salt and hopefully you find some value in the, uh, what we find to be true. But in, at, in at, at, at the end of the day, it's as simple as this. I read, you know, or read and listen to a lot of books a week and not all aspects of a book are something that I'm taking to heart, but maybe there's a, maybe there's a topic or a phrase 
or, 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 or an idea that I didn't think of. And I think this book is going to be different things for different people in different parts of their life. And you might pick it up today and it might mean something to you in three years. It might mean something different. And I think that's the same thing when it comes to content, podcasts, and social media. You know, you could listen to the same book six times and hear a different thing every time. And I think that's what's great is, is the book is going to encompass so many different aspects of it that there's going to be something in the book for everybody. What I'm definitely what I'm looking forward to is, um, you know, it's not going to be a crazy Harry Potter read. You know, we're looking at less than 250, almost said 250 words. 250. We, hey, we're trying to write it for people like me and you, man. You know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I, well, you, you, I actually you, have this look, book. is massive. This is probably the biggest book I've read in a while. And I'll be doing a review on it soon. Collapse. It's pretty much, uh, well, well, we'll talk. Anyways, just look it up. Collapse. It's kind of about like how world civilizations either thrive or crash. Um, that's the biggest book I've probably read in literally like 10 years. But back to your point, 250 pages sounds good to me. <laughs> no, 100%. And so, and so I'm curious because I asked my buddy this, this week um, who's launching a book next month. And like there is, how do you, anybody that's out there looking to create social media, looking there to start a YouTube channel, a podcast, Instagram, write a book, whatever, whatever we do every day. How do you tell yourself that the effort that you're going to put in matters to somebody and you don't like second guess yourself or think, cause you know, I, I put up not doing a podcast for two years, you know, there's no part about me that thought I was going to write a book. And so, you know, what's your advice to people when they're, when they're trying to start something new, because I know that's a big thing for everybody. I just want to thank you again for being Mr. Traffic Cop and kind of steering this conversation and getting us like some, that's a valuable question to ask and hopefully I can deliver some value on an answer, again, full disclaimer, um, any advice I give you, you might, hey, you never know, you might die from it, but uh, I think I've got some good feedback for you. And then um, I, I'm gonna hit you back with a good question here too. So really, um, I've taken this one to the bank and ran with it and I picked it up from, uh, you know, I, I guess I can technically say from a mentor of mine, cause I am in, in Russell Brunson's Two Comic Club coaching program. And um, this was out from one of his podcasts though. And he's talking about the, uh, actually, I think I shared this with you too. So <clears throat> the movie Catch Me If You Can featuring Leonardo DiCaprio. I've seen it 17 read, billion times. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't read the book. I've seen the movie once. I can't really remember the storyline of it, but I know, you know, obviously he's like a really smart guy dodging everyone. And um, I want to say this was from the book. I don't know if it was in the movie, but the main actor, and this is to your point of like, basically, actually to clarify, so I, I get this one spot on. You're basically saying, you know, what is the advice for someone who doesn't feel like they're enough of an expert to have their voice be shared with the world. Exactly. Okay. So the key is this metaphor, the guy from catch me if you can, whatever, I think it's again, only in the book, he goes into a classroom at whatever university it is sitting there for the first 10 minutes. It's the first class of the semester. No professor shows up. So he just gets up and walks up to the front of the class and starts teaching the class on like physics or something that was like not an easy subject to begin with. Um, and then from that point on for the rest of the semester, he ends up teaching the class for an entire semester. No one ever knew that he actually wasn't <laughs> the professor. And so later on when they interview him and they're like, how did you pull off teaching, you know, physics 401 uh, for an entire semester? Like, how, how did you do that? And he's like, well, it's very simple. You know, I just, made sure that no matter what, I was always at least one chapter ahead of the class. And as long as I could stay one chapter ahead of the class, then I could teach. And that is like the golden message of the decade for anyone who wants to uh, make an impact and, and start pressing record, whether it's a podcast and doing a live stream like this, is you do not have to be the smartest person of all time in whatever it is you're talking about. You just have to be one chapter ahead of who you're speaking to on a given subject. <laughs> and so I think like, for example, Austin, you and I, we're very comfortable at this point, pressing record and at least having a conversation. That's one chapter ahead of someone who's thinking about doing it. So we can give yeah. you our feedback and our insight and our advice on it. So find, just find something that you're confident that you're one chapter ahead of, of most people. I'm sure you have one, everyone has something like that. And then start talking about it and just kind of see where it goes. So that's the, that's the advice. And that's again, why we're writing this book. We're not saying we're the best networkers the world has ever seen obviously we want to be <laughs> one day but um, we're confident that we're you know a chapter ahead in, in many regards so that's why we're doing it 
mic drop. I mean, it's, it's the truth, <laughs> you know, you know, something, by the way, I love that movie and it's amazing, but, but more importantly, one of the things I heard at every point in your life, you have to be being mentored by somebody and then you have to be pulling somebody towards you as well. And so with that symbiotic relationship of mentoring somebody and you're, then you'll always be growing. And so it's just this, you know, Anthony does this analogy all the time. You know, do you want to be a bucket of crabs or a barrel of monkeys? If you're a bucket of crabs, they're grabbing at your leg and they're pulling you down. You know how the, bu- the barrel of monkeys, you know, have the, have the, uh, they have the, uh, they have the, the hands and they're helping each other get out of the bucket. And so it's the truth in life. It's like, we're not sitting here saying that, but all we're saying is like, I guarantee you, like a perfect example, somebody messaged me the other day about my rant, right? And they're like, dude, I don't even know who you are anymore because from episode one to episode 185, and you sound like a great person, like a whole different person. And I'm like, dude, I don't even give a fuck anymore. Like, I'm sorry, you know, like, no, but what I'm saying is like, I did nine podcasts the other day and it's just like, my friend's like, dude, you're so smooth in and out of it. And you're like, okay, that's great. You closed that down and went and started up another one. He's like, I've never seen it, but that's because I've done it so many times. And that's what you have to do is imperfect action leads to great results. You know? Yeah. And mother is uh, the, the mother of all learning is repetition. And that's clearly what you're doing. And so now I, I've got a question for you too, because you're definitely um, someone who thrives when you shoot from the hip. We were joking about how you'll say some things that are quote worthy. And then a, a day later, you'll be like, wait, what? <laughs> who said that? I said that? But really? Did I say that? Mm-hmm. Um, so let's, uh, I, I want to kind of ask and just again, share with anyone who, who is listening. Um, what is your secret or, or how do you do these stream of consciousness interviews? Because I think a lot of people, for example, that want to start their own show or start just doing anything similar to like what we're doing right now um, feel as though they have to be 1000% prepared with questions. Um, but you know, again, it's in times like this, you actually sometimes get the best questions and the best answers, but it ain't easy, right? Like it takes practice. So what's the secret? How do you like, how do you do, do these off the top of the head type of moments? So I'm going to do the quintessential Austin thing. I'm going to tell you a secret. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, <laughs> but uh no, but, but, but here's the thing, true, true form. Think about it this way. Yeah, I stole a little bit from Gary V and he was kind of my inspiration for this. But if I have an agenda, right? If I have a set of questions, then I am trying to prepare the conversation towards my audience for context. If I'm trying to get context. Then I'm not being my true authentic self. If I'm not being my true authentic self, I'm going to be uncomfortable. If I'm being uncomfortable, I can't be relaxed and have a great conversation. All right. And then the second thing I do is in the first part of the meeting with somebody, I'll have a couple of points I hit on and we'll, we'll, we'll enter in a couple of different phases of their life. And once I see their face light up and they're excited, I, I stay there. And that's my secret. Yeah. Oh, OK. So you're reading. I mean, that's really reading the energy of the environment, whether it's a virtual room or, or a real room. Um, let's in all, speaking of the environment, one thing that you had a lot of success with recently, and I think as long as it just comes down to the this is like consistency is I just can't stress how important it is to be consistent. And you have embodied that clearly for the past two years with 75 hard doing it back to back twice, going to do it again. So I look at your mastermind, construct your life podcast mastermind that thankfully, you know, I'm watching here in Canada as I'm frozen and <laughs> we won't go the, the whole COVID direction, but I, I'll just put it this way. Sometimes I definitely wish I was hanging out with you in Austin and I see your, you know, your face-to-face masterminds that you're doing. And I just go, wow, like if Austin keeps doing this three years from now, this is not only going to be big where he lives, but I know you've got the mindset where you want this, these, these gatherings of greatness to happen all around the world. So I'm trying to think now. I wanted to ask you a question about it. That's what it was. Just kind of share with uh, the listeners about what you're doing as far as building that networking opportunity and, and what it means to you. There's, there's a couple there's a couple different reasons why. And then, then I'll explain kind of why, why I think it's so important. There are, you know, Grant Cardone said that you're coming to 10X Conference to listen to the people speak on stage 
but yet the people sitting next to you are the most important people that you meet. And so that's what I thought about. Like, can we create a network of people and events where people are meeting their future business partners, meeting their future JV deals, meeting their future people to learn from, to mentor, to get coached from. And then the second thing is, is I'm trying to create an environment. There's, there's, a, there's an ulterior motive. Real estate has become boring as fuck. And everybody's so worried about the next goal, the next wholesale deal. That, and so I'm just trying to make it different, that fun, experience-driven thing. And I spent 20 years in hospitality, so I try not to overthink it. But ultimately, what I'm trying to do is create an environment for people that maybe aren't as extroverted as I am to feel comfortable and asking questions and being surrounded by people that they can get advice from that isn't social media, that isn't them having to stand up on stage and ask a question. And like the, we had the event in Austin and then I'm getting messages the next day, like, Oh dude, I met like three new friends, like people I my new business with. And I'm like, they never said like, Oh, that content was amazing. And it still was, but they said like, Oh, I met future like friends and future people I'm going to work with. And like, that's when it hit me. It's like, but, but here's the thing. I take it so seriously that I don't realize that like I'm even doing it because like, I'm so nervous leading up to it. And then <laughs> like, <laughs> but then, oh, like, I mean, when you're, that, when you're hosting the party, it's a completely different story. I, I hear you on that. <laughs> the, 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 so the Nashville one in May is going to be our biggest one. And awesome. I want to ask you a question. Like I'm going to lay out the speaker platform of who we have and, and kind of their background. The names are irrelevant because I'll just give you the resume. You know, we have a syndicator who's done 2,200 deals. We've got a, a 24 year old developer who's, developing a food hall you got uh, a boy, yeah. i'm sure tyler cobble is going to be there right he's my co he's my co-host so tyler cobble's my co-host man. uh we've got uh ruben my my buddy podcast guru uh, social media we've got a property management company that manages a thousand doors we've got a dude who manages eight luxury airbnbs and did six hundred thousand uh, is, is uh evan gonna be there with you evan holiday if he's not in, if he is not in hawaii at his wedding he will he will be speaking too nice. we've got we've got mike trovelli from jake and gino talking about underwriting we you know like my, my question in, i'm talking about mindset we got ryan breedwell there who manages two billion dollars like where are you going to get a better collection of i mean you want to talk about a soup to nuts like top down like I can face to basically face. face to face and face to face and free and free. Yeah. <laughs> and free. Where can you get a better explanation of how to do your social media, how to create long-term wealth, how to be a syndicator, how to start a podcast. It doesn't exist. And, the, and here's, what's interesting is these people are happy as hell to, to speak. Like they're like, yeah, we'll do it for free. But here's the kicker is I pay for the video and then I give the speakers their video. And that's my gift to them. So they have something tangible they can walk away with to give marketing and then boom. Yep. And you actually just hit on something really big that um, I'm, I'm working on this presentation now. And you know, again, thankfully you've been able to be a part of this somewhat. So you've seen it with uh, Next Level Webinars. The secret, <laughs> this is the big secret of Next Level Webinars. If you wanna add value to your guests and there's no you know financial transactions taking place, maybe you're doing it for free or whatever. Um, once the webinar is over, what we do, and thank God I have the best intern of all time. I feel even bad just calling him an intern just because of how valuable this guy is. Shout out to Aaron Eiler. Um, Aaron will go through our webinars and chop up the webinar into 10 to 14 bite-sized clips. Yep. So not only can we then after go ahead and drip that through our marketing and our messaging and podcast and whatever, but also give that to whoever we hosted whoever we hosted now has a full webinar that they can use to teach and do whatever the heck they want with and 10 to 14, you know, one to three minute clips of valuable information that they can then put to work for their use and for their audience. And not to say nobody's doing that because people are certainly doing that, but I've found what differentiates what we're doing with next level webinars and why I'm confident this is going to be something like I keep telling people I want next level webinars to be like the 10 X or not 10, well, 10 X too, but the uh, 10 talks of webinars, right? I want it to be at that level where it's like, for example, I, I've never even met Ted. I'm sure Ted is a cool guy, but I haven't seen Ted on the Ted talks. I don't really know who he is. I, I want to get away from me being the face of it to just like, yo, next level webinars. This is, <laughs> this is it. So um, I went on an Austin Lindy rant right there, but um 
yeah, whatever you said with me triggered that. And so <laughs> just happy to share it. No, oh yeah, we're talking about adding value to the speakers. That's the key right there. Yeah. No, it's it, it's it's the truth because because okay, there's there's money that you need to spend and there's money that you have to spend. And so my question to you is if my podcast is a time is a time sink and a money sink. But have I been indoctrinated to a large more people than I have, you know, 20,000 downloads, all that stuff. Like, have I got coaching clients off of it? So really, is that cost? Yeah, and don't get me wrong. I still have to keep my cost in line. That makes sense. But, but ultimately, it gives you a platform to offer value to somebody right away. Like, like dude, talk about next level. Hey, nice to meet you. You want to jump on the podcast? And here's the deal. If somebody's referred to me, I don't even ask. Yeah, here's my schedule book. Because that person has gone out of their way. Now, granted, I would wish that I'm like, hey, slow down. <laughs> I need to, <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is like, it can be as simple as, hey, like I had a couple coaching clients this morning. I said, listen, Instagram is four. You can go four on live now. I said, why haven't you right. done this yet? And so we did it the second day it was out with like four of the greatest investors around the country. And guess what? I was indoctrinated to their audience. Now their audience knows who I am and vice versa. So we're, we're co-collaborating off of audiences. That's the key. Yeah. Let's talk about that real quick. Cause I think that's big and no one's, again, you just caught a big fish here as far as a future trend. Instagram is taking a stab at clubhouse in some regards, being able to have four people go live at once now on the platform. Um, it's funny that you did it like what, two days ago. Cause literally less than a week ago, I had heard that it was coming. And then next thing I know, of course, I get a text from Austin Lenny, like, hey, it's here. We're doing, we're doing another one tonight. Yeah, we're doing another one tonight. You got, you got all four people set? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. You want to tell me? <laughs> if you, I if you do, no worries. I am ready no, to do it. And, uh, so, yeah, you can I mean, let me know. But, but hey, so. my, my, uh, I'm sitting here in Costa Rica and my girlfriend's uh, busy tonight doing a ceremony with my coach. So you're never going to get the guy. Let's do one tonight, dude. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There you go. And actually I, I have to say, uh, I mean, we haven't really, we had, before we went live, we had one connection issue and it was actually on my end. So it looks like Costa Rica has got good uh, internet. That's good. <laughs> hey dude, I've already done six coaching calls today. I've got two, two meetings after this, four more coaching calls. So let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so shifting gears. I'm trying so, to think no, 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 before, no, 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 you're, 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 you're not paying. We got to stay on topic because we didn't actually execute that topic. So what was it? The, you, we need to talk about what I've, what you and I have mastered is co-collaborating off other people's platforms and networks. Oh, actually. Yeah. And that was the one thing that you said that I did think about is like, again, you don't have to be the smartest one in the room. You just really have to be the one that knows how to bring people together. You have to you be, have the to host be in the party. room. Look, look, here's the deal. Me and you, we're TV hosts. That's all we are. And the TV just happens to be the social media platform. <laughs> yeah. I can get everybody in a room. And so if that's the case, I don't have to be the one slamming down, you know, a thousand units, but I can be talking because they don't want to host because they don't want to have to run the conversation. I'm totally comfortable doing it. So if you have those skills, and put yourself in the room. Like the, the guy that I have a meeting with in a minute was because me and Ruben, was it me and Ruben or was it you? It was, it might've been you. And we just <laughs> went live on a Saturday and that room got uh, big. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we that did was me and you. Live. Yeah, guess what? He came on the podcast yesterday and he's talking about investing in our business because of that clubhouse. Cause we went randomly in on a Saturday. I would have never met that guy ever. And he's yeah, moving to Dallas. Like and, he, and he's moving to Dallas. <laughs> and and we're we're looking at doing a JV yeah, deal yeah. on some real estate. Yeah. I remember that yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's like, what the hell, dude? And he's the guy, he's the guy that said we need to write the book. Well, that's the thing, is uh I think with Clubhouse, for example, there's a, a lot of people that are throwing question marks at it because hey, you know, are you wasting your time being on the platform? And uh the most valuable thing that I continue to hear from people is exactly what you're talking about right now is the connections and relationships that are established on Clubhouse. You might not do a deal live on the platform, but you mm -hmm. will likely be able to generate one-on-one -on -one conversations off the platform. And that's where the money is. That's where the I'm money gonna, is. 
any of this stuff. I'm gonna give to- I'm gonna give everybody a secret right now. Your your why, your your need to make money has to have something greater than you attached to it. And what I mean by that is as simple as this. I'm in conversations with guys all day long who have 3,000 units, billion dollar private equity funds for the podcast. If your sole reason that you're excited about life is I wanna go make a million dollars, they're gonna write you off as another dude that only cares about money. But when I tell people that my why is to help recovery people and create financial literacy in middle America and poverty stricken areas, they can attach the need to wanna help me to that, not to make money. So powerful. So powerful. Thanks for bringing that one back up too. I mean, the why <laughs> changes everything. Um, for me, I, I mean, I, I probably could say I have like five to 10 whys, right? But I feel like uh, my life mission and what I've seen inspire me and draw people into this community and circle that we're talking about, Austin, is... Um, <laughs> there's I'll try to tell the story quick but you know I'm on a mission to create financial freedom for the next 90 generations of Carswells and it used to be nine but then I read 10x by Grant Cardone and I was like I might as well make it 90 but something about that you know it's also a mission it's not necessarily a goal um, when you have a mission it's something that you can pursue for, for your entire life and was it you or uh were you the one with the Matthew McConaughey reference? How, how it's kind of like, I'm doing this. Yes. Everything I'm doing is, is for the future Adam. Like there's, there's going to be another yes. Adam in the lineage of <laughs> Carswells. And this is for you, man. Like take this message and run with it and multiply my message. That's, that's, the, that's for the betterment of our family and those around us. Like that's what it's about. That's my why. That's who it's for. I know you can relate to that and uh, just honored to be on this mission with you. Dude, dude. You know, it's been said before, but we're going to leave it at this and we're going to get out of here. Wake up every day and do something that your future self is going to thank yourself for. Dude, we were dropping bombs on this bad boy, dude. I swear to God, (laughs) we should do this more often. I can't wait to send this. to. I can't wait to put this in my group afterwards. I'm going to put it in mind. Thank you. Let's talk about that real quick. Facebook groups are powerful. A great way to get engagement with the people that you care about the most. And I mean, looking at how Facebook is marketing Facebook group, groups, guys, please tell me, correct me if I'm wrong, and this is for you, Austin, but also for anyone listening, just to think about how often have you seen Facebook advertise itself on CBS, CNN, whatever, like any major network, how often have you seen Facebook advertise itself? I'm going to say probably not a whole lot. If you have, let me know. The one commercial that I've ever seen that comes to mind for me from Facebook is their recent marketing for Facebook groups. And a company like this, Facebook, (laughs) um, would not just be wasting their money when they're marketing stuff like that. So, I mean, I think it's a major forecast for the future. Think of it this way. There's a lot of noise on the feed of Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. But you have, whether it be 100 people, 50 people, or 1,000 people, you have a concentrated audience who can watch your content and engage with you without the distractions of the rest of the universe. It's a no brainer. Why would you not? Exactly. And I, this, I considered this too, and I want to hear your thoughts on this because actually you're, I think is your group called the construct your life group? Yes. So I was thinking, I was like, do I want to make a, like a next level Facebook group or something that basically didn't have my name in it? But then I was thinking, you know, again, the people, the individuals that I look up to, we talked about some of them already, like Frank Kern, Russell Brunson. All you got to have your name. You got you. Yeah. And you know that because like you, we just, I know you we know. just, we just launched my new website yesterday Yeah. and it's austinlenny.com now. So when I'm on a podcast or on a thing, go check out austinlenny.com. You have to construct it's crazy. your life, construct your life. Next web, next level webinars is part of who you are. It's not who you are. You have to have the name because <laughs> I was like, all right, if, if Russell Brunson was going live in the ClickFunnels Facebook group, as opposed to the Russell Brunson Facebook group, I'm like, I know I would actually definitely tune in to the one on the Russell Brunson group. If it was on the ClickFunnels group, I'd be kind of like, uh, is it him? Is it someone else? You know, so it's just if you're going to be creating a group, my advice is don't be afraid to use your name. Um, that's ultimately your name is what is connecting people and, and bringing people into your network. It's pretty crazy. 
So I love it. All right. Let's end it. <laughs> All right. And uh, yeah, I'll let me after I end this, I'll follow up with you in two seconds. Three, two, one. Take it to the next level. <laughs>